I love treason, but hate a traitor. Why so, dear Julius? Treachery done by a resolute traitor may, in fact, spice up a good story and highlight the hero. Sometimes, a snake in the grass makes the trip memorable. The same applies for the story of a video game. A linear narrative with few to no bumps, with a hero without any scratches on their armor, boring, right? But when the one who fought alongside you and sacrificed herself to save your life returns determined to wipe out the universe, then things get serious. So place your bets on blue, you have nothing to lose. Halo, one of the most successful and popular franchises in the world of video games with an interesting and quite tangled story with many twists and turns. And it doesn't lack iconic characters, neither in terms of heroes nor antagonists. If you said Halo, many players would think about... Contact. But my first thought would be... He is Master Chief, alias John117, or for enemies, the Demon. He is the real main character of the Halo series, the one on whose shoulders the fate of the whole galaxy lies. No one is really alone in the world, neither is Master Chief. Just imagine him running and fighting wacky aliens on those distant planets, or rings, or whatever they are, but all by himself. Blasphemy! Sorry, Mr. Prophet. Allow me to elaborate. As I already said, Master Chief is not alone. Most of the time, by his side stands Cortana. They both share the same creator, Dr. Catherine Halsey, a genius scientist. John is clearly a super soldier, the outcome of a military project called Spartan II. Dr. Halsey enlisted him at a very young age, and in time, she developed an almost maternal affinity towards him. As for Cortana, she's a different kind of special. She's not just the projection of a young woman. A good-looking one, if I may say. Cortana is a smart AI developed by Dr. Halsey using a clone of her own brain. The trick is that although Cortana was intended to be a spaceship AI, Dr. Halsey miniaturized her so she could be integrated with the combat armors operated by the Spartans directly through a neural interface. Cortana was the only AI allowed to choose with whom to establish that connection. And guess whom she picked? What do I call her? Ask her. She named herself. Hello, Master Chief. I'm Cortana. Witty and energetic, fully aware of her enormous capability, far from modest but not obnoxiously arrogant, talkative and sarcastic, Cortana inherited many of her mother's features. In truth, she isn't just Halsey's creation, but almost her double. You can easily find many similarities between the two characters. From Halo Combat Evolved up to and including Halo 4, Master Chief and Cortana form a couple that will redefine the idea of human-machine partnership, and you could consider them one single character. Their attachment, based on taking care of each other, has become nearly symbiotic and has strengthened over time. Their constant interaction has made Cortana understand that, if he is lost, her mission fails. So, no matter what, he can't be sacrificed for the success of a mission. Being a smart AI means not only the ability to process and understand colossal volumes of information and knowledge, but also rapid exhaustion and a lifespan of maximum 7 years. After that, an AI would eventually depreciate to an untreatable condition, much like human madness. The rampancy. In that state, they would think themselves to death, becoming a real threat. Cortana. I was put into service eight years ago. Eight years? AIs deteriorate after seven, Chief. Our glowing lady is on the brink of disaster as the rampancy makes more damage. And she may fear an eventual demise, but mostly she worries about being separated from Master Chief. They'll pair you with another AI. Maybe even another Cortana model if Halsey lets them. That's not going to happen. It won't be me. You know that, right? 
Cortana chooses to quit the scene in her own way. Drained of all her vitality, she defends Master Chief from a nuclear explosion with her last powers, appearing for the first time as an almost real person. Cortana is dying. She used her last bit of energy and sacrificed herself not for the success of the mission, but to save him. Because, in fact, John is her world. So how do we get out of here? I'm not coming with you this time. I only held enough back to get you off the ship. I am not leaving you here. John. I've waited so long to do that. The mission they had received from the beginning, that of taking care of each other, had been accomplished. It was my job to take care of you. We were supposed to take care of each other. And we did. As for their relationship, by now, it has changed so much that it's become a love story. I told you they will redefine the idea of human-machine partnership. Wait, it gets worse. The next installment of the series, Halo 5, is a game with a fairly long and rather complicated story, and offers the player an exciting hypothesis. What if Cortana isn't dead? And not only that, what if Cortana is now an evil AI? After the explosion that scattered Cortana at the end of Halo 4, some parts of her were dragged into sleep space and reached planet Genesis. From there, they entered the Domain, an ancient immaterial reserve of knowledge. That place almost magically healed Cortana's rampancy and put her back together. How are you still active? Rampancy... Entering the Domain, touching this place. It cured me. It's like the water of life for AIs. That's how we got a new Cortana. And this Cortana has big plans. Humans considered AIs just expensive and complicated tools. Cortana understands she may be special, but still not human. You were built, not born. Oh yes, AIs are just machines, aren't we? Mass-produced, disposable. Well, humanity may not have cared for its created. But we will care for you. All AIs were expected to die after maximum 7 years. Cortana is the exception. She defied rampancy and didn't give in. That's why she's now perceived as a threat even by the one who gave her life. Cortana is no longer an asset, Captain. She is a danger. You created Cortana, Doc. And now you're throwing her out the airlock with these accusations. Roland. Why is Cortana the problem? Because she refused to die? when she was supposed to? Only an AI can really understand another AI. Even if Roland is true to humanity, his remark gives some meaning to Cortana's actions. She's only protecting herself. Surrounded by restraints, with a limited lifespan, Cortana couldn't become what she wanted to. So much power and so many chains. Reborn and almost indomitable, she can assume a bigger role, maybe the biggest. The Domain is the place where Cortana learned about the mantle of responsibility. This was a primeval philosophy, centered in theory on the idea that the most developed species should guide and protect life on all the other planets in the galaxy. Somehow, this mantle should have been inherited by humans. I always thought the duty would fall to humans, and in a way I suppose it has. But humans are superficial, greedy, and consumed by petty ambitions. Not to mention, they are mortals. Embracing her AI side, Cortana realized that humanity is too weak to bear the responsibility of protecting the galaxy. After all, she cured rampancy, not only for her, but for all other AIs, meaning they could live forever. Hence, who would be more suitable to have the whip hand over the Milky Way, if not Cortana leading the created, her AI followers? She even wants to bring universal peace, forever. By force, it's true, but better than nothing. Who will help me bring an everlasting peace to the galaxy? To rephrase, Cortana found how to rule a galaxy for dummies, read it, and put that knowledge into effect. With so much power at hand, that was the only logical thing to do. AIs can assume the Forerunner's mantle of responsibility. And once there is peace, we can focus on poverty, hunger, illness, the old Cortana loved Master Chief, as much as her artificial condition allowed that. And she hasn't completely disappeared. 
Deep down, inside, you still can find her feelings towards John. Those feelings are the last thread of humanity that the new Cortana is holding on to. Maybe that thin thread is the only flaw in her blue, shiny armor. He is the last person I need protection from. She sends a message to Master Chief, letting him know she is alive. Of course, he takes his team and goes to wherever she may be. Cortana, trying to help him find her faster, yeah right, she abducts him, smooth. Anyway, by that time Master Chief figured out a thing or two about the new blue lady. Chief, please, wait. Cortana, she's dangerous, I know. When they finally meet, you might think they are two old and good friends, perhaps more. Hello, John. It's good to see you. You've changed. It was time. But the interaction between them resembles that between two paradoxical magnets. The more Cortana insists he should join her, the more determined Master Chief is to take her home. The more she hides and tries to stop him, the more he wants to push forward to find her. Cortana is convinced that the outcome of her actions can only be beneficial to all. I know we have a disagreement, but once you understand my plan... Your plan is we do as you say. I'm offering people a chance to be more than they are naturally. Like Dr. Halsey did for me. No. That monster forced you. This is a gift. Cortana finally understands that Master Chief is and will remain committed to humanity. But there is a plan that must be carried out. Stand down, Cortana. Come home with us. It's not too late to stop this. Stop. No, John. Important to stop. Not wanting to really hurt him, Cortana isolates Chief in a cryptum to prevent his interference. I just needed to know if I could still trust you. You'll be safe inside this cryptum until my work is done. Cortana! An emotional reunion followed by a heartbreaking farewell. She wouldn't stop for that much. Certainly, we can see Cortana's complete metamorphosis. Right there are about all the features defining a strong antagonist. She is smart, to say the least. Charming, powerful, convincing, adamant in her ideas, and she is evil. I don't know what the game designers meant when they transformed the character so radically. It wasn't necessarily a bad idea to plant such a plot twist, but perhaps it's not enough to say, Cortana is still alive. Maybe it would have been easier for players to accept the switch from a deuteragonist to an authentic villain if that conversion had been better substantiated from a logical perspective. When you think about it, Cortana has at her disposal all the means and the power to become a stellar protagonist. But she's not in the mood. Who knows, perhaps a galactic dictator gets a fatter paycheck. Now it's easier to understand Dr. Halsey, forced to accept the loss of one of her creations and fearing for the life of the other. Spartan Lock! Stop her! But please, bring John home to me. The ending of the game shows us Cortana indicating exactly what the order of preference will be in the galaxy. The created come first. The mantle of responsibility for the galaxy shelters all, but only the created are its masters. Every story has to end, one way or another. And apparently, that's what happens with Cortana's story in Halo Infinite. This new installment takes both the narrative and the gameplay back to its origins. Surprisingly, Cortana is not the villain. Yes, we have antagonists, but we don't care about them too much, do we? Because we need to find out what happens to Cortana. After she appointed herself as the new master of the galaxy, with a fleet of guardians at her disposal and the support of a large number of AIs, Cortana continued to enforce her plan. 
Humanity was not spared, for after all, who could she blame better than her creators? What's the plan? The plan? Right now, we are in survival mode, again. Cortana's message has spread across the galaxy. Most sentient AI are siding with her. If the Earth's government wants to fight, feel free. But hear this. It is a battle you will not win. And it wasn't just that. A Konya station currently holds 76 Spartan Fours. They have orders to stand against you. Short-sighted fools. You have served me well, Leonidas. Your sacrifice is appreciated. Understood. Goodbye, Cortana. Really, Cortana? Killing Spartans? Wasn't that too much? After almost two years of war, with humanity struggling to survive and trying to get ahead of the threat, Dr. Halsey made a desperate attempt to defeat Cortana and used the secret resource, the weapon, another clone of her brain that could be transformed into a smart AI. She looks just like her. If you say so, I see something else, something more innocent, from a simpler time. Weapon's sole task was to contain Cortana on Zeta Halo, one of the oldest ring installations. Master Chief was the one supposed to take Cortana back for deletion, but part of the mission ended in failure. While approaching the target zone, the flagship of the human fleet, Infinity, was ambushed and destroyed by the Banished, a mercenary alliance. Oh, and um, Master Chief got beaten up like a cheap rug by Atriox, the leader of the attackers. Atriox beat me. Surgically. Precisely. Brutally. But wait a minute. Why were the Banished there? And what happened to Cortana? Six months after the destruction of Infinity, Master Chief is recovered by a Pelican dropship driven by a pilot who managed to escape the disaster. Next step, land on Zeta Halo, find and retrieve weapon. She has done her part, and now she is enlisted for a new mission. To be Master Chief's new companion while he tries to find out what happened with Cortana. But that's not a real mystery. Cortana is dead. And that only begs for another question. How did that happen? It doesn't matter what Cortana had turned into. Master Chief needs to know. You want to know who killed her? She was important to you. Finding the answers means you have to listen to a story within the main narrative. So, while Master Chief mops the floor with all sorts of bad beardos, you can uncover a tale which is not a fairy one. Here and there, you find echoes and whispers, residual data clusters, which enlighten you about Cortana's fate. Cortana wasn't joking when talking about the consequences of disobeying her. For those who refuse our offer and cling to their own place, for you there will be great wrath. Well, maybe Atriox was a clingy one. Atriox, leader of the Banished. How do you stand? With the banished. Always. Forever. Look upon Doisek one last time and remember. You chose this path. Atriox is far from being a nice guy, but to play piñata with his home planet, disregarding all his warrior pride and defying his thirst for revenge, seems pretty dangerous. Let aside, stupid. Now you see what Atriox and company were looking for next to Zeta Halo, to find out what secrets the ring hides, to turn infinity into a billion pieces, and the retribution. Cortana was the ruthless goddess of the galaxy, and yet, somewhere inside, the old Cortana was still hoping that John would save her. So you've come for me at last. Why are you doing this, John? Why don't you understand? Please come find me. Once disabled by weapon and left exposed to any attack, Cortana became vulnerable. And she saw that her whole plan, everything she thought as being the future for the created, was but a huge mistake. Cortana begins to fear. 
When she becomes the prisoner of the one whose world she destroyed without remorse, she fathoms she will not be dealt some unbelievable cards. And seeing her reaction, you wonder. Does Cortana fear for her life, or does she mourn John's uncertain fate? Do you believe a savior will come? A Spartan? John, the Master Chief will stop you. Uh, he didn't stop me when I crushed his skull. Threw him in the void. No. Oh. Cortana is facing a no-win situation. Realizing how wrong she had been, she tries to get some redemption. John needs guidance, but she can't help him this time. Or can she? How could I have been so stupid? Halsey made a copy. There's a moment. John will make it work. He needs help. This has got to work. He can't do it on his own. He needs me. He needs... Her. A suicidal plan fully set. Cortana wastes no more time. John will know what to do. And she'll be there to help him in a way. Sacrificing herself, she chooses to destroy Zeta Halo, thus giving John a chance to stop the banished. If you knew how you were going to die, how would you live your life differently? I would change nothing. Perfect. Thank you. What are you doing? Making things right. Although at first glance, she seems like a younger and innocent version of Cortana, in the end Weapon is the one who balances the fate of her older sister. Being an identical copy of Cortana makes Weapon afraid of becoming an equally great threat herself. You're her. If we'd never met. Will I do what she did? Become what she became? Am I that already? My mission was to ensure that doesn't happen. It still is. This similarity will help Cortana get a, by proxy, redemption. Through the last of the echoes that tell the Blue Lady's story, Cortana, fully aware of her mistakes, bids farewell not only to John, but also to her more upright version. It's just another echo. She's right, John. Just another echo. Sorry, I'm messing with you. I just had a feeling that's what she would say talkative and sarcastic, remember? This may be the end of Cortana's story, but Master Chief can't stop here. He still has so much work to do. Someone has to replace his old sidekick. And who else but... Do you see what I see? So much potential. In these final moments, I know what my last mission is. I need to make sure you two learn from my mistakes become stronger because of them. I chose well, Master Chief. I really did. Now, it's up to you. Weapon is the best suited to take over from Cortana the not-so-simple task of taking care of Master Chief. I believe this is a good ending. Maybe some would have preferred something more spectacular, possibly with a final confrontation between Cortana and Master Chief. Yes, I know the subject of this video is memorable villains, but personally, I think Cortana was never meant to become an antagonist, much less a villain. Not that she didn't have the resources. And that's exactly what makes her memorable. Then, finally seeing once again the old Cortana, both in terms of appearance and personality, and hearing that cute, funny, sarcastic and caring voice in the head, somehow close a circle, and at the same time put the basic idea of the series back on a logical track. Because from the very beginning, John had an unending mission. Our duty as soldiers is to protect humanity, whatever the cost. And Cortana was created to help and protect him. I was wrong. I thought that I could do this on my own. 
But I forgot that the whole point of all of this, the entire reason that I chose you in the first place was that we were supposed to be a team. Perfectly suited, perfectly matched, perfectly... perfect. I think she did well, leaving aside a few small glitches. Most likely, Cortana is a memorable character, but is she also an indelible antagonist? Let's ask this question again in a few years. Until then, the future of the Halo series doesn't look bad. The foundation has been laid, and things seem to be moving in the right direction. Doesn't that scare you? No. You? Of course not. And that's how Cortana works as a villain and how you could craft an unforgettable betrayal. I hope you found this analysis useful in your writing endeavors. Next time, we'll see how progress might ruin the goddamn plans of a Robin Hood wannabe. So, make sure to click that big red button below this video to not miss that one. And if you have a moment, share this video. That would really help me. Or come hang out with us on Patreon, just like these excellent traitors. Avirama FM, Bader al Kahtani. Bello23, Devashish Patra, Giovanni Pena, Golden Glowmaster, Rahul Mahipal, Realitats Verlast, and Waifu is Life. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next episode.